Well, hello and how are you? Hey friends, welcome to the Shin Show. I am your host, Senator Briscoe, coming to you from right here in where else but St. Charles, Missouri. Hey, you know what? Today's Tuesday, June the 23rd, 2020. Got a happy birthday shout out going out to Tina, Amishan, and Karen Anderson Kata. So, without further ado, here is birthday song for the two of you. Hey, Karen and Tina, guess what? I heard it's your birthday today. So, happy birthday, I must say. You know, you turned a brand new year older today. So, happy birthday to you, I said. I said, hey, Karen. Hey, Tina. You know, I heard it's your birthday today. So, happy birthday, I must say. You know, you're... One more year older today, you so happy birthday to you, I say. And many more. You cha da da cha 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 ha ha ha. Alrighty, alrighty, alright day. That being said, um, let's see, what else was I gonna say about that being said? Oh, yeah, that being said, let's do some Facebook poke shout outs. That's right, I've been poked. I've been poked by some folks, and, well, I'm poking them back now. Uh, Karen uh, Sanders, poke you. Uh, I got a couple of more pokey friends. Dana Jannings, poke you. And uh, Amanda Sue Little, you are being poked too. Pokey, pokey, happy pokey. Pokey friends, these are my pokey friends from Facebook. That way I get tickled in the ribs. Hee 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 hee. Hee hee hee. Ha ha ha. That would be the uh, little um, Pillsbury Doughboy. Ha 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 ha. Alright. Any hoot nanny. That being said, let's do some local weather. Local weather today is brought to you by Family First Home Health Care. That's right. Family First Home Health Care is a home health care agency. They are. And uh, other than them being a family first home health care agency, they are one of the agencies that um, does all kinds of neat stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they will do. They will do. They will do all kinds of stuff. Well, let's see. A, B, C, D. Well, come on, jump. Oh, there it is. Yeah, uh, they they do it all. They will house clean. They will sit with. They will get you up and get you done. Um. Anyway, you can give them a call at six three six seven five seven three eight one one and talk to Tracy Berry or six three six three. I mean, 734-9802, and talk to Brandy. Either way, you'll get to talk to somebody today between 8 and 5 p.m. Also, uh, you can contact them on the web at familyfirsthomehealthcare at gmail.com or at familyfirst.com. That'd be F A M I L Y one S T H H C dot com. Yes, and that is their true name, Family First. It's not F I R S T, um, so don't confuse it with that. All right, alrighty then. Anyway, that's our local weather uh, commercial. Hey, 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 hey. Today's local weather. It's eighty-one degrees out there right now, and the sun is a shining. Well. The sun was shining. I don't know that it is anymore. All I got to do, though, to find out is reach over here, hit this switch. Yep, that sun is shining brightly. Shining brightly. Anyway, so the sun's shining brightly. It's 81 degrees out there. And so, therefore, I'll be going out there here shortly. But that being said, uh, right now uh, we've got sunshine and clouds mixed. A stray shower or a thunderstorm is quite possible. Highs around 81 degrees Fahrenheit and winds are going to be west and northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Clear skies and 
lows around 59 degrees overnight, with winds west to northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Wednesday, June the 24th, sunshine and some clouds. Highs around 82 degrees Fahrenheit, winds west, no, sorry, northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Clear skies overnight, 62 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are going to be light and burial, variable west at 4 miles per hour. And then sunny skies along with a few afternoon clouds and a stray shower or thunderstorm is quite possible on Thursday, June 25th. Um, high temperatures around 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are going to be light and variable west to southwest around 5 miles per hour. Then a few clouds from time to time overnight with lows around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are going to be light and variable south to southwest at about 5 miles per hour still. Friday, June the 26th, mostly sunny skies. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. Highs around 94 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Partly cloudy skies early with scattered showers and thunderstorms later on during the night. Lows around 72 degrees Fahrenheit and winds are going to be southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Chances of rain, 40%. And then Saturday to wrap up the final five-day forecast day, June the 27th, scattered showers and thunderstorms, highs around 87 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are going to be southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chances of rain, 40%. Partly cloudy in the evening, followed by scattered thunderstorms after midnight. Lows around 71 degrees Fahrenheit and winds southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chances of rain, 50%. And there you have it. That's your five-day forecast from right here in St. Charles, Missouri. We're going to do a story because, see, I said yesterday we were going to do a story, and uh, we are going to do it. And the Frog Prince is the name of the story we're going to do today. In the olden times, when wishing was some good, there lived a king whose daughters were all beautiful. But the youngest was so lovely that even the son that looked on many things could not but marvel when it shone upon her face. Near the, near the king's palace there was a large dark forest, and in the forest under an old lime tree was a well. When the day was very hot, the princess used to go into the forest and sit upon the edge of this cool well. And when she was tired of doing nothing, she would play with a golden ball, throwing it up in the air and catching it again. And this was her favorite game. Now, on one occasion... It so happened that the ball did not fall back into her hand, stretched out up, up to catch it, but dropped into the ground and rolled straight into the well. The princess followed it with her eyes, but it disappeared, for the well was so very deep that it was quite impossible to see the bottom. Then she began to cry, bitterly, and nothing would comfort her. As she was la laminating in this manner, someone called out to her, What is the matter, princess? Your lamentations would move the heart of a stone. She looked around towards the spot where the voice came and saw a frog stretching its broad, ugly face out of the water. Oh, it's you. Is it only a splasher, old splasher? Oh, it's you. Is it old splasher? 
I'm crying for my golden ball, which has fallen into the water. Be quiet, then, and stop crying, answered the frog. I know what to do. But what will you give me if I get your it back for you? Whatever you like, you dear old frog, she said. My clothes, my pearls, my diamonds, or even my golden crown upon my head. The frog answered, I care nothing for these, for your clothing, your pearls, or your diamonds, and uh, nor even your golden crown. But if you will be fond of me and let me be your playmate, sit by you at the table, eat out of your plate, drink out of your cup, and sleep in your little bed. If you will promise to do all these things, I will go down and fetch your ball. I will promise everything you like to ask, if only you will get my ball back. She thought, what is, it? is this silly old frog chattering about? He lives in the well croaking with his ma mates, and he can't be the companion of a human being. As soon as the frog rece received her promises, he ducked his head under the water and disappeared. After a little while back, he came with the ball in his mouth and threw it on the grass beside her. The princess was full of joy when she saw her pretty toy again. Pick it up and ran picked it up and ran off with it. Wait, wait, cried the frog. Take me with you. I can't run as fast as you can. But what was the good of his crying? Croak, croak, as loud as he could. She didn't listen to him, but hurried home and forgot all about the poor frog. And he had to go back to his well. The next day, as the princess was sitting at dinner with the king and all the courtiers, eating out of her golden plate, something came flopping up and the stairs. Flap, 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 flap. When it reached the top, it knocked at the door and cried, Youngest daughter of the king, you must let me in. She ran to see who it was. And when she opened the door and saw the frog, she shut it again very quickly and went back to the table, for she was very much frightened. The king saw that her heart was beating very fast, and he said, My child, what is the matter? Is there a giant at the door waiting to take you away? Oh, no, she said. It is not a giant, but a hideous frog. What does the frog want with you? Oh, father, dear, last night when I was playing ball the, at the well in the forest, my golden ball fell into the water, and I cried, and the frog got it out for me. And then, because he insisted on it, I promised that he should be my playmate. But I never thought that he would come out of the water. But there he is, and he wants to come in to me. He knocked at the door for the second time and sang out, Youngest daughter of the king, take me up, I sing. Knowest thou, no, not what... Mm, Knowest thou not what yesterday, though to my didiest to say, by the well in the forest dell, youngest daughter of the king, take me up, 
despising. Then she then said the king, What you have promised you must perform. Go and open the door for him. So she opened the door, and the frogs shuttled, shuffled in, keeping close to her feet until he reached her chair. Then he cried, Lift me up beside you. And she hesitated till the king ordered her to do it. And when the frog was put on the chair, he demanded to be placed upon the table. And then he said, Push your golden plate near... Push your golden plate near me, that we may eat together. She did as he asked. Lost my place, sorry. She did as he asked her, but very unwillingly, and could easily be seen. And the frog made a good dinner, but the princess could not swallow a morsel. At last he said, I have eaten enough, and I am tired. Carry me into your bedroom, and arrange your silken bed, that we may go to sleep. The princess began to cry, for she was afraid of the clammy frog, and when she did not dare to touch, and which was now sleeping in her pretty little silken bed. But the king grew very angry and said, You must not despair any one who has helped you in your need. So she seized him with her two fingers and carried him upstairs, when, where she put him in a corner of her room. When she got into bed, He crept up to her and said, I am tired, and I want to go to sleep as well as you. Lift me up, or I will tell your father. She was very angry, picked him up, and threw him with all her might against the wall, saying, You may rest there as well as you can, you hideous frog. But when he fell to the ground, he was no longer a hideous frog, but a handsome prince with beautiful, friendly eyes. And at her father's wish, he became her beloved companion and husband. He told her that he had been bewitched by a wicked fairy, and nobody could ever release him from the spells but she herself. Next morning, when the sun rose, a coach drove up upon dawn by eight milk-white horses with white outstretched plumes on their heads and golden harnesses. Behind stood faithful Henry, the prince's body servant, and the faithful fellow had been so distressed when his master was changed into a frog that he had caused three iron bands to be placed around his heart at least it should break from grief and pain the coach had come to carry the young pair back into the prince's own kingdom the faithful henry helped both of them into the coach and mounted again behind delight behind delighted at his master's deliverance the coach had come to they had only gone a little way when the princess heard when the prince heard a cracking behind him as if something were breaking he turned around and cried Henry, the coach is giving way. No, sir, the coach is safe, I say. A band from my heart has fallen into twain. twain. From a long, for long I have suffered woe and pain. While you, a frog within a well, 
enchanted where by we a witch's spell. Once more he heard the same snapping and cracking, and then again the prince thought it must be some part of the carriage giving way. But it was only the bands around faithful Henry's heart which were snapping because his, of his great joy at his master's deliverance and happiness. And there you have it. That was the Frog Prince by the Grimm's Brothers Fairy Tales. I think tomorrow we'll probably end up doing uh, the Cat and Mouse in partnership. That will probably be tomorrow's uh, reading. We'll try it. Okay, here we go. Uh, yep, that's done. Okie dokie. Now let's see. What else do we got going on? Let's see. Well, well, what kind of time do we have left? How much time have we spent? Ooh, my goodness. It is time for our portion of the program called What Else But Our Daily Bread. And our daily bread portion of the program is brought to you by none other than the Bible with Frisco 2020. Yes, the Bible with Frisco 2020 is a daily reading of the Bible to be completed within one year. Today, the reading is going to be in the Old Testament, Esther 9 through 10, and in the New Testament, Acts 7, 1 through 21. Alrighty, let's see here. Under, underestimating ourselves, that would be today's um, devotion in the Daily Bread. And uh, we'll be reading 1 Samuel 15, 10 through 18. Okay, well, let's say that, um, like I myself, was put in charge of Walmart's maintenance um i didn't feel like i deserved that position and well that's they put me there for a reason because of the simple fact that well i was qualified to play that part in my life and well i didn't feel right being there and doing what was necessary for that role i didn't feel like the the people under me that had been there for a lot longer, I felt that they deserved to have the promotion and not me because, well, I had just came in from automotive from the garage and was put in a position to be an authority over all the other maintenance personnel. And I didn't feel, I didn't feel right about giving those guys orders because they'd been there a lot longer than me. Most of them were older than me. Um, and this was way back in, uh, what, 92, 1992 or so? Uh, and, well, I had the opportunity to become something great. Um, in God's power, uh, God's grace, he gave me the opportunity and the fact that I lacked the confidence or the drive to go ahead and... and um, take that position up with full responsibility, I ended up just going ahead and quitting and moving on to a different job, which I should have stayed there and done that, but I just didn't do it. And well, that's what underestimating ourselves is all about. Um, let's try reading First Samuel 15, 10 through 18. Then the, world, then the word of the Lord came to Samuel. I regret that I have made Saul king, because he has turned away from me and has carried out my instructions, and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was angry, and he cried out to the Lord all that night. Early in the morning, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul. But he was told, Saul has gone to Carmel, and there has, 
there he has set up a monument in his own honor and has turned and gone on down to Gilgal. When Samuel reached him, Saul said, The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. But Samuel said, What then is this blast, this bleating of sheep in my ears? What is this bleating of sheep in my ears? What is this lowing of cattle that I hear? Saul answered, The soldiers brought them from the Amalekites. Uh, they spread the best, they spared the best of the sheep and cattle to sacrifice to the Lord your God. But we totally destroyed the rest. Enough, Samuel said to Saul. Let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. Tell me, Saul replied. Samuel said, although you were once small in your own eyes, you did you not become the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel, and he sent you on a mission, saying, Go and completely destroy those wicked people, the Amaleks, and wage war against them until you have wiped them out. So you see, Saul didn't cover, didn't do exactly what the um, Lord thy God had said. And so therefore, he fell short. Okie dokie, hey, that's uh, the end of the daily bread portion of the program, which was brought to you by The Bible with Frisco 2020. Yes, The Bible with Frisco 2020 is a daily reading of the Bible to be completed within one year. Today's reading in The Bible with Frisco will be Esther 9 through 10 and Acts 7, 1 through 21. Alrighty, folks, that does it for me. Uh, that'll be the end of the Shen Show. And I've got one song to sing for you, and that one would be... Oh, well, goodbye, my friends, it's uh, time to go. I said goodbye, my friends, it's time to go. Oh, I hate to leave you, but I really must go. So goodbye, my friends, goodbye. Let's hear it's been Shenandoah Briscoe saying... Hello, and how are you? Thanks for tuning in to the Shin Show, and as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I, so be blessed and come back and see me tomorrow, because, well, hey, I'll be here, and I hope that you are, too. <laughs>